Angular comes with a few built-in filters that are very useful for letting us display information the way we want. We can go even further though by defining our own custom filters, and that's what we'll do in this lecture. So like we said at the end of the last lecture, it would be really nice if we could have users select which minimum and maximum price they want for their property search. And we can do this really easily with a custom AngularJS filter. Now we've seen some of the filters built in with Angular, but we can also create our own filters to do pretty much whatever we want. So let's head back over to index.html and I'm going to paste in quite a bit of new HTML. But really all this is, is some selects with some options for different price ranges. And I'll give you a chance to copy all of this out. As you can see here, we've got an ng model on each of these select elements, and we're pointing the selects to a property called priceinfo.min, and then the other one over here, priceinfo.max, for the minimum and maximum prices. Okay, so if you save that and check it out in the browser, we'll see that it shows up, but the styling isn't all that nice yet. So let's fix that up now. Let's create a new folder called CSS. And within that folder, we will do a new file called style.css, really simple. And within style.css, let's just paste a simple style for our price form. We've already got a class of price form on our elements back over here in index.html. So let's take a look at what that looks like now. Before that'll work though, we do need to make reference to our new CSS file right up here. So we'll create a link and we'll point it to CSS and style.css. And if we refresh, we see that we have it coming in. And one additional edit that we can make is we can wrap this in a container now. And so back over here, we'll just put a div with class of container. We'll take the end div and place it down here. And let's make sure that works. All right, perfect, it's showing up well. I'll just bump all of this in a little bit. Okay, so now we have to create our JavaScript file that will be our filter. So the way that we do this is we create a new file in scripts and let's call this one cribsfilter.js. And just before we do anything here, I'll make sure that we put reference to it down here in our HTML file. So let's say we want the cribs filter. So just like with our factory and our controller, we need to get a hold of our module. And so we say it's ng cribs. And then we want to call filter here instead of factory or controller. It's going to be filter. And we're calling it cribs filter. And then it also takes an anonymous function, just like the other ones, that define the filter body. And in this case, the filter needs to return something. And what we'll want to return is a function. And the function here will accept a couple arguments. The first one we're going to call listings, and the second one we'll call price info. Essentially what this filter will do is it will return an array of filtered items. So we're going to set up some logic for filtering our listings and then push them onto an array that will be returned at the end. So first of all, let's set up our filtered array. So we'll say var filtered equals an array. We'll just set up an empty array. The next thing that we'll need are variables that reference our minimum and maximum prices. So let's say var min equals price info dot min and var max equals price info max. And so those properties, min and max, will come from the price info argument that we passed into the return function. Angular also gives us some helper methods, and one of them is a for each that works well with Angular. So we'll call Angular for each, and then we want to iterate over the listings being passed in. And for each of the listings, we will take the listing, and let's do some logic on it here. So what we'll say is if the listing price is greater than or equal to our minimum price and the listing price is less than or equal to the maximum price, well then we can push that listing onto the array. So within the if block here, we can say that we will push our listing onto the filtered array. 
And so once all of that is complete, we will return the filtered array. So just to go over this once again, our filter is going to return a function that takes some listings and price info details, and it's going to set up an array that gets returned. Now this array is going to have on it any listings that fall between our price ranges. And these price ranges are referenced with the minimum and maximum properties on price info. So we iterate over all of our listings, and then we check whether the price is within the minimum and maximum range. If it is, we push it onto the filtered array and return it. All right, cool, so that's all done. Now we need to make use of it. So back over here within our index.html file, where do we actually make use of it? Well, if we remember, we are using ng-repeat to iterate over all of the listings. And this is exactly where we can use the filter. So once again, we use filters by accessing the pipe, and then we can call our filter. So like we saw previously, we can use currency or JSON or any of Angular's built-in filters. But in this case, we'll use our custom filter, and we just access it by calling cribs filter. So we know that our filter is set up to take an argument for price information. And the way that we can put that argument onto our filter is with the colon. So we put a colon there and then we want to pass in price info. So that's how we pass in an argument. We put a colon and then the argument. And so price info in this case, if we remember, we've got that on our ng model for our select elements. So as you'll recall, we've got price info min here, which is bound to this select element. And then we've got price info max, which is bound to this select element here. And that is what we're passing into our cribs filter. You'll recall though, back over in cribs filter that we have listings as the first parameter here and price info as the second one. And listings actually comes from the iterated items themselves. So our listing data will actually be the first parameter for cribs filter. All right, so let's save this and we'll head back over to the browser and refresh to see if it has worked. So as we can see, there aren't any listings showing up, but let's take a look at what happens if we select a price range. And there we go, we get some listings that show up. So the problem is that when the application first loads, there aren't any values initialized for our minimum and maximum prices. And that means that we will get an error and that there won't be any listings. However, once we set those properties, the filter will do its thing and show the listings appropriately. So what we can do here is set up some initial values on the minimum and maximum price so that we don't get just a blank screen when the app loads. So let's head back over to the controller to make these changes. And we can actually just get rid of that test hello message that we had. And what we'll want to do is access our price info property on scope. So we'll ask for price info. And then to initialize it, we can set it to an object with some properties. So the first property will be min, and let's say the minimum price is zero to start off with, and then the maximum can be, let's say, one million. And now we will have some initialized values for our price info. So let's head back over and see if this works. We reload, and sure enough, we get all of the properties showing up. So once again, we can set which values we want for our filter, and we can initialize some values right off the bat so that we don't get a blank screen showing up. So that's it for filters. In the next lecture, we're going to see how we can let the user add new listings in.